Welcome to the Social Mission Revolution. Each week we explore some of the greatest undertold stories of businesses and everyday people who are making their ultimate impact in the world through social mission. This is Social Mission Revolution and this is your host, Andrea Putting. Welcome to the Social Mission Revolution. My guest for this episode is Daphne Capatis, and she is the founder of a skincare company called La, La Joie, and which means the joy. Well, we could so we might look at it and go La Joy, so we can we can use that too because I'm sure we're going to have a lot of joy today as we speak to Daphne about not just her business, but what her social mission is all about. So I'd like to welcome you, Daphne. Well, thank you for having me. We will have some joy, absolutely. I'm sure we will. I'm sure there are going to be a few laughs along the way. So let's start with this question that I like to start with, with every guest, and that is if there was just one thing for you to fight for, what would that be? It'd be justice, equality. They're in pa- it's a powerful thing, isn't it? Well, for me it is. I think it's my biggest bugbear is when I think things are not just. Um, not personally just for me. Like I can, I can sit back and, and when things don't go my way, I can rationalise that and, I can, and I'm okay with that. Um, but if I witness injustice, that just grinds my gear it really does so yeah. I, I can't sit back and watch injustice or when some, something is, is is not equal I mean I, I when I say equality I, it's not a gender thing it's equality for all you know um, and I think it stems from the fact that my parents would say it's our duty as privilege to protect the vulnerable um, and the more educated you are and the more gifts you have the more you are compelled to give back so I think it's probably drummed in from my parents um and to try and make leave this world a better place by when by you know actively looking to help and not with the position of what am I going to get back out of it altruistically and the interesting thing about that is that my mum would say to me, you give and you will get back. The universe will give it back to you. You will get it back tenfold. Um, don't ever question whether you'll be rewarded or not. And, I mean, admittedly, she was coming from a Christian perspective, from an orthodox one, but not necessarily thinking that, I mean, I'm saying from her view it was partly because of her upbringing, but she didn't restrict it or limit it through her faith. So justice equality means for everyone, no matter what colour you are, what religion you are, where you come from, how educated you are. So where I was completely and absolutely blessed was to have two parents who told me that everyone was equal no matter what they looked like on the outside and whether you could understand their language or not. And I think that, I reflect back now, as someone who is a parent and think, wow, how phenomenal was that, that my parents did not make judgment calls. So it's one thing, you know, discussing it and talking about it, it, but more Mm. impactful is how do you demonstrate it? And my parents certainly demonstrated this in everything they did. They were just generous and they made sure that everybody that they came across in their life felt equal and heard. Yes, it's the same kind of principles that, that I was brought up with as well, that everyone is equal and deserves that opportunity. And I know that it's greatly impacted who I am today and the fact that I'm sitting here having this conversation in the first place does really reflect on, on my upbringing with, with what we call the worth of all persons. Every person is equal and has the opportunity and deserves to have that same value. Yep. And, you know, it's, and I think we're lucky. 
Absolutely. Because that's shaped our worldview. And I can see yeah. that within my with, within my children. Mm. Um, and now, you know, they're like 117, she's in year 12, that my son's in year 10, um, he's 16. So I can hear it reflecting back. I hear it back. And, and then that makes me happy that, okay, th- they've got it, they're getting it, they know. And I can see them, you know, getting upset. Like I said, if you if you are rude to me, if you're horrible to me, if you troll me, I have been trained by my parents again not to react, to swipe. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter how horrible you can, you know, you can be to me. I am so good at not reacting. But if I sit back and witness you be horrible to someone else in front of me, then no. I'm sorry. I'm, yeah, I'm not well. acceptable. <laughs> Whether I know you or not, and it's happened, you know, it's happened in public places where I've gone, mm, not okay. Yeah. Please don't do that to that person. Yes. I, I just come back, I sit back and watch Injustice, and my kids are the same. Yeah. It's a great way to to bring our young people into the world, in, into this kind of... Especially today where, they, you know, where, yeah. where you know, materialism and branding and fake... Um, and coming from, you know, a skincare cosmetic background, 31 years product development experience globally, um, it does disappoint me to see that the claims, the false misleading claims have skyrocketed in 31 years because everybody now has become a social media, has become an expert mm-hmm. on certain things and plugging certain things, which I know are scientifically are not founded. Um, again, because of my science background, I can't sit back and watch this. But, of course, I'm not going to spend all day correcting people, okay? No, you can't. No. And if I don't have anything good to say, I will say nothing. But when you follow me or when you are with me amongst, I will tell you, you know, how I feel about something in my opinion on certain things. But if you make an outlandish claim, I'm not, I don't feel that it's my position to slander you or to take you on social media so i will educate through from a positive position but not through dragging anybody down because that again goes against my yes. beliefs in you know my core values yes and that's what i call authentic influence okay i'm gonna have to use that one authentic oh. Influence. Authentic influence, yes. I love that. It's really important that the influence that we have is authentic because there is so many. Oh, sorry, authentic influence, yes, authentic, yes. Yes, because there's so many influence, so-called influences out there that that are really superficial and they're not really coming from this, this core place of of love and acceptance. And, and I do believe, yep, yeah, and I do believe that in the end, and when I do see that and I go, oh, my gosh, you've got millions of followers and they're believing this horrible yes, misleading statement that you just made mm-hmm. um, and they're all following you. Yeah. There's no way that you can pop up and say, you know, collagen supplements, they don't work. You know, I can't say that. Do you, do you see? But if yeah. you ask me. I will tell you, but I won't go onto somebody else's page or somebody else's Instagram uh, or space and and call them out on what they're doing. But if someone asks me, I will always come from a position of the truth. Yeah. Whether that whether that hurts or not, I just I just have to. And if it's not scientifically validated, I am not going to say yes. This supplement is going to reduce you from wrinkles for twenty five, tw- like erase twenty five years because I know it won't. And that's me coming from thirty one years of product development experience. I just yeah. won't do it. Yeah, I don't think anything's going to erase twenty five years. Besides, I don't want to erase the last the twenty five years well, of my life. You know, <laughs> exactly. And you think that by now. After how many years, right, that, you know, and I remember, you know, as a young chemist working in Avon thinking just this whole ageing thing is just really over the top, whereas a lot of Europeans don't um, see it that way. Um, A lot of countries in in Europe don't, you know, the women don't fight. I mean, they, you know, they're they're trying to, of course, keep as as youthful as possible, but it's not this fight this war on you know how bad it is to age and how invincible we are once we get to a certain age um 
And, you know, and today it seems to be a lot worse because the girls seem to be a lot younger fighting to maintain mm-hmm. <laughs> their youth. And I'm thinking, well, the only way that you're actually going to stop the ageing process is through death because <laughs> that's the only thing that really works. Yeah, it does. <laughs> on wrinkles. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway. So I'd love you to tell, tell us a little bit about, well, let's start with a little bit about, about what your business is. And then we can talk more about the social mission side of it. Okay. So what we did was, so after, um, you know, uh, getting married and having babies, I couldn't travel around anymore because the jobs that I had were working for multinationals and I did a lot of travel, which was fabulous. You know, five countries in seven days was lots of fun. But as a mum, I chose uh, uh, to give up that career, which I had done, you know, beautifully and loved for 38, 39 years. Um, and then what I did was I went back to uni again and, and studied sustainability because I've absolutely always loved anything that's to do with uh, the environment and environmental. And in my first degree, which was pure and applied private chemistry, we did do a lot of environmental aspects anyway um, and about sustainability. So then my mother had an ongoing issue, and it's a totally unglamorous one. Now I've gone from creating perfumes, working from the noses in Paris to... Um, you know, creating fragrances that go into Johnson Johnson baby shampoo in China or soap bars in Indonesia. I've been in Manchester where my client creating the fragrances that went into and into Imperial of the Soap. So really glamorous, you know, uh, industry. So something that's not really glamorous, which is you know, chafing and rashes underneath breasts, which is common. Mm-hmm. And then when I investigated a little through Twitter, so there are a lot of benefits to social media as a small business. Yeah. Yes. And one of them, a big one for me was going into Twitter and saying, oh, wow, look at this. This is really common. It's not just my mum. A lot of people are suffering from chafing between their thighs or some, you know, some other um, parts of the body and rashes. And it seemed to be that I couldn't find anything that worked for my mum. Uh, and... She's also a diabetic, so she's quite restricted in what she can and can't use, and she's got hypersensitive skin. So it took three and a half years. Now, I am a surf surf lifesaver. My whole family, we're all surf lifesavers because, again, that goes back into giving back to the community and demonstrating it, not just telling our kids we need to give back, we need to be good, we need to not gossip. We need to demonstrate that as human beings because they watch what you do more than what they listen so um, we tested the, the, the cream on Kame cream on surfboat rowers for three and a half years because they chafe really badly in their marathons for four and a half, for four and a half hour marathon races. We mm-hmm. tested it on runners, marathon runners. Then we tested it on black lingerie, black satin lingerie. And the objective there was to make sure that it's not going to dirty or mess up on your black lingerie if you're wearing my cream. So basically we, we launched at the end of October 2017, we launched in Amazon US. Amazon now has, has classified it as an Amazon Choice product, which is fantastic. That they, They've you know, highlighted, flagged that as Amazon Choice in its category and that's got nothing to do with me in terms of, like us in terms of, it's, it was organic. Yeah. Um, You've which got is that because it's a good product. It's a good product. And I had to query Amazon. Why did you, how did you classify Kame as an Amazon choice? And they've come back saying it's because of the reviews, which again are organic and truthful. I don't know who they are. It's not clickbait, it's not click farm. Nobody's been paid to do this. Um, because that's another problem. A lot of reviews yes. that you see online, you don't know what's authentic, you don't know what the truth is, you haven't got a clue. Is no. it a, it's like filters, you don't know, right? Yes. Um and so, and it's also because of the return rate, because they just, people don't return the product. So they not only classify, they look at the reviews and they can tell when now they're cracking down on fake reviews and they can see how many times the product's been returned. Do you see? Mm-hmm. That's why it's been classified, Kame has been classified as Amazon Choice. The other positive about the Kame formula is because we had to eliminate all sorts of raw materials for someone like my mum who's a diabetic with sensitive skin and eczema prone, it's working for eczema. Yeah. So people after six months were sending me in their before and after photos without me even asking, saying you, under, you, need, to, you need to, you know, create an eczema form, cream and wash. So where we're at now is uh, we're 
you know, nearly three years into it, we're perfecting the two new formulas, which will be um, targeting those with eczema and dermatitis. So last year we had a big surge because people were over hand washing, which is necessary, oh, yeah. especially if you're a dermaphobe like I am. Um, so they were over hand washing, over hand sanitizers aren't great for you, your skin. I always tell people to use a soap bar first, uh, but if you can't reach to a soap and running water, of course you need a hand sanitizer. So there was a surge in sales last year because of the um, using Carme as a silky barrier to protect their skin and nobody get and people aren't stung from it. So that's where it came from. It was basically, and the name for joy is basically at some stage in life, you are going to have a skin condition. I personally haven't had chafing, but I've had severe acne uh, in my late twenties. Um, and so when you do have a skin condition, enjoy the skin you're in because when you do enjoy the skin that you're in, your cortisol does drop and then the skin does start to heal itself. Mm. You see? So it's so it's about the stress that you like. If you look at yourself in the mirror and go, "Oh my gosh, look at my eczema, psoriasis, my chafing," yes. it's so not normal. Then what happens is you start building up cortisol, um, and that impacts all our organs. So that's where the joy comes from. That yes, every yes. time you come across me or my brand, that you are left with a feeling of content, contentment, joy. Yeah, yeah, and that's so true because I, I know that myself. I I've had psoriasis all my life. Not not severe psoriasis, but whenever I am stressed, I'll get a flare-up. It's obvious. Well, that's it. And there's no medication or cream, and I say this openly, there is no medication or cream or pill that's going to help you. I mean, Kame will not sting you. It will create a barrier and you'll feel soothed, but it's also mm. up to you to reduce your stress. That's it's right. a holistic approach to wellness. It can't yes. be just... We pop a pill, we put a cream on, and it's a band aid solution for us mm -hmm. to be able to live fulfilled, happy lives. I feel that yes, we need hope, we need a purpose to wake up to in the morning, but we also need to take charge to be able to reduce our stress. I do it through daily exercise. Um, exercise is incredibly important to me. That's how I reduce my, my cortisol, um, and I make sure that I'm not around toxic human beings. <laughs> That's and then I'm okay. One. Then I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah. So then that brings us to what brings you joy. And because my personal belief is what brings us joy is when we are being in service and working on our social missions. So including that in our life. So I'd like to know how do you incorporate that with your business? So what... So something that was very important to my family growing up was the need to be charitable. So my parents believed that it was our duty as privilege to give back to the vulnerable. So I would watch my parents go to homeless shelters and help people. I would watch them help the mentally ill. I remember when my father passed in the middle of my HSC and the table was empty at our home that he had just built, my mother would go down and she would pick up people that were vulnerable of all different, I mean, back in the 80s, very hard to find someone of um, a Pakistani, born in Pakistan, Muslim, very hard to find that. Yeah. Uh, and she'd find, you know, uh, refugee Somalians and she'd, and she'd bring them home and we would all eat together. Um, and I remember thinking, look at that, it brought her so much joy to be able to help the homeless. Yes. It brought her so much joy to, to, for her to help the refugees. And she'd say to me, and I remember once Inam, who was very significant in our life, he had come from Pakistan and he, his father had passed. So he came to Australia so he could raise enough money to send back to his sisters for them to get married for their dowries. When he first walked into the home, he sat on the ground. And my mother, I remember grabbing him by the scruff of the neck and lifting him up and saying, what are you doing? He said, back in Pakistan, you are at a higher level than us. I have to be below you. And she pulled him up to her face and said, you are my equal. And this is a, like, this is an old mother, you know, to yeah. a young boy. You yeah. are my equal. You are never to do that to anyone in society. We are equals, mm. right? Beautiful. I adored her for that. Yeah, so, I feel my eyes tearing up. Oh, because I adored her for that. And, and to think back then, you did not find someone oh. that was from Pakistan, Muslim, 
on the northern beaches of Sydney. You just didn't. I mean, it's hard to find them. Do you see what I mean? But she, but she, but that's what she would do. She would go out actively searching for people, and that brought her joy. So I could see how much joy that brought her. So when we launched La Joie, my husband also has, um, even though he's had testicular cancer. When we first got married, I said to him, "Okay, so what's our mission?" Like, I mean, for me, my family has always been about the homeless and the mentally ill. What's your mission? And for him, it was, it's the homeless. And I said to him, do you want to actively, you know, raise funds for cancer? And he's like, you know, because you've had cancer. He said, no, there's a lot of, you know, marketing dollars that go towards cancer, but there's not a lot of marketing dollars that go to homeless. Yes. So that has been our goal from the beginning. What can we do so we can actively support the homeless and the mentally ill? And coming from an extremely glamorous background, you know, going to the fashion industry as awards as a fragrance house, it was very important for us, for me, to be able to give back to the unglamorous, what we call the unglamorous side of society. Do you see? Yeah. The real. And it's a slippery slope. It can happen to you and I quickly. It's not that if you you, you have conversations with these people, you will see. And how easy it is for them to be railroaded. So even though, you know, I've seen shanty villages in Indonesia, it's part of my, you know, I've been blessed in terms of my travel and I've seen a lot of poverty in Mexico in the early 90s. Um, and, I, I, and I've actually even seen poverty in France, in the back streets of France. In 1977, I was, I was 11. I remember my father saying, saying to me, come and take a look at this, Daphne. This is the side that you don't see in Paris. And it was all the homeless. This is the side that the tourists didn't see in 1977, but my parents made sure that we saw, and we saw it in Barcelona, in Spain, and we saw it in Greece. So for me, uh, it's about giving back and and even closer to home because when you go and visit Catherine in the Northern Territory, like we did in 2017, and you take a look at how our Indigenous are being treated, our Indigenous what their lives are like, of course I want to be able to help the homeless and the, so the, the people in Indonesia. Of course I want to be able to help the poverty that I saw in Southeast Asia and in Mexico. But for me, as someone that's born in Australia, I think that I need to clean up my backyard first. Yes. Yeah. Because I can't bear to see the homeless uh, belongings increase in Chatswood like I didn't see it 10 years ago so I was there a couple of days ago and around my suburbs I can see there's more and more homeless thanks to COVID so going back to what we're doing in terms of a business we decided from the beginning that we would be a business for purpose a business for purpose so of course we need to make a profit absolutely yeah okay or else we wouldn't survive that's right Yes, but so what we do is every so often, um, we, um, including last weekend, we will do 100% sales of long weekends, 100% of, of profits from sales will go to Lifeline, 100% of profit will go to Red Cross. So every couple of months, we will donate whatever it is. You know, sometimes it's great and it can be $1,000. Sometimes it's not great and it can be like $500. Um, but whatever we can, we do. So we're actively, constantly giving back, donating back to those specific charities, the charities where align with us trying to make the difference in our community within Australia. Yeah. So, you know, we've also donated to like to to the Indigenous, to the the legal services for them. Um, So they, when they find themselves in front of a judge, (laughs) they get the best chance they possibly can. So we're doing our little bit. Um, we're doing our little bit every every couple of months to give back 100% profit, and we say 100% profit to specific charities um, so that we can also raise awareness as well. Yep. Some people go, oh, wow, that's really, that's, that's yeah, I didn't, didn't think about it. I mean, and homelessness has skyrocketed. I mean, I was at the homeless shelter last fr- uh, uh, Friday, um, and it's just the one in Newtown, and the volunteers are getting older. 
they're struggling. Yes, and that's a problem across the board. Oh, it's, it's so upsetting. Yeah. The cooks are getting older. Yeah. So I so, have been going to this homeless shelter since I was a kid. Um, Father Nick Darios um, runs it and he does an absolutely remarkable job. But those volunteers, they they need help. Yeah. And part of this is we've got to start to we've got to encourage our young people to get involved in things and to understand what the value of volunteering and being involved in social media. And mission you know, is. the interesting thing about social mission, when my mum used to say to me, give, give, and give and just walk away, just give and walk away because you'll get it back. She couldn't scientifically prove anything, right? But they did a documentary, this is years ago now, on making Australia happy. And what they found is, so they took swabs out of people's mouths, they took swabs of people who weren't feeling very happy, and, of course, they could see that, they could test, they could see that their serotonin levels, their happy hormones had decreased and their cortisol levels, their stress had increased. Then they put them into a soup kitchen and they did that, they tested again and they found their cortisol, their stress hormone had decreased and their happy hormone had increased. Brilliant. So it's scientifically proven that when you give, you're actually helping your own mental health. That's so it's right. not just saying, oh, gee, I feel sorry for you because you're so down and out. It's not coming from that position. No. Because they're giving back to us too. That's right. Do you see? Because every time you volunteer, you're getting something back. You do. As- at the same time, and if not, I'm probably getting from them than they're getting from me. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. It and does. Because that now too. So that's yeah, it's one, one thing. It's like, no, get really selfish. Go and volunteer. That, but exactly. <laughs> it's true. Go and volunteer and you feel so much better when you do. Yeah, absolutely. So it's not just coming from a mindful of like, you know, oh, I'm helping them out because they're so needy. It's like they're helping you too. Yes, absolutely. And when you have a conversation with people, then you get to see just how similar you are. It's just that they might have had, it was funny because like, I think it was yesterday I was watching something on, oh, Australian Story, I think it was, and it was a tennis player. Yes. Did you watch that one? Yes, I did. Oh, my gosh, wasn't that absolutely fantastic? Yes. That, that brought me so out to a joy. homeless man and yes. Uh, plays tennis with him and take him to tournaments. And you see, like, look how much joy that's life. bringing me now just talking about it yeah. to you. Yeah. Okay, I'm just discussing that, reliving that, and I'm excited talking about that with you. Mm-hmm. So yeah. for me, I would rather be in a space where conversations are like this, where we can feel empowered, where I don't feel like I'm a victim, where I feel that I can share joy as Little, like if we all did a little tiny bit, I believe the world would be such a happier place. It absolutely would. So, I'd like to know how does having this aspect of social mission and incorporating your business, how does that make you feel about getting up every day and, and working in your business? Does that change the way? The long, well, the long-term goal is, and, of course, I'm saying it out here, okay, and, I've, and I say it on my website because, like I said, when, when I first met Paul and we first got married and I questioned him, do we support cancer because you've had cancer? Do we support heart disease because my dad died at 44 from a heart attack? Yeah. And so did his five siblings and his dad. So that's quite yeah, quite strong um stroke heart attack genes, Mm -hmm. we decided, no, we are going to give back to the homeless. So the goal is this, that once we launch the next two products, and, of course, we're doing it slowly, we're doing it organically, we're doing it the old-fashioned way, there's no speed to market, we're not rushing it, because I want people to go, wow, this really does work. Do you see? Yeah. This really does. It's not a miracle. I don't believe in miracle creams or miracle pills but at least it'll help calm you and soothe you and create a barrier. And, and I know there's nothing in it that's going to, uh, because I have allergies myself, um, I know there's not going to be anything in there that's going to sting you or create an allergic reaction because there's no fragrances, it doesn't look great because there's no bleach in there, there's no colours in there. Fantastic. Like no, but you know what I mean? Because, yeah. because there's no colours, like my daughter's looking at the, at the wash going, Mum, you know, it's yellow. Yeah, but hold on. 
There's no colours in it. Let me just quickly show you. <laughs> Look at the colour. Beautiful. But that's because there's no colourants in there yeah. and no bleach, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's completely natural. And there's no fragrances or essential oils. Now, if yeah. somebody's got eczema or psoriasis. You don't want to go anywhere near fragrances. Yeah, Absolutely. you don't. I exactly. You see? So, it, so it's nice and soothing and moisturising as you wash your hands and it's not going to sting you and it won't be too dry. Okay. Yes. So consequently, so basically um, the long-term goal is to be able to fund homeless shelters. So the long-term goal is to be able to either give the money to someone to run it. Do you yeah. see what I mean? Because a yeah. lot of problems, a lot of times as well with charities is only because I've been involved in so many charity and fundraisers, so many charities, um, and I'm careful with them, is sometimes people set up charities as a great tax deduction. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to do that. No. We're not going to do the old, oh, I need to reduce my tax, so I'll give myself 200000 yeah. as a director. Yeah. And then Paul can have 200000 as a director and you guys can have one cent of it, yeah, yeah. of it. No. Okay, there's a yeah. lot to do that and so that's why I'm really careful with who. So, of course, we do donate to Lifeline. We do donate to Red Cross. We donate to the Indigenous, like I said. We donate The charities that we donate to specifically, we have done our research to make sure that the money goes to the people that need it. To, and it doesn't be, get eaten up the administration fees because that's what I hear a lot of times. People are like, oh, well, I don't know where my money's going to go. Well, I mean, I'm not asking for much. Do you, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, do yeah. your research and then you, you'll know which one. So we do, we do work with Concord Hospital, you know, for blood cancer research. I have, you know, been involved in that too because, of course, again, you can see where the money's actually going. Yes. Um, when I can, like, like the, the homeless shelter in Newtown, if you have got a spare loaf of bread or a spare uh, milk and you happen to be in Newtown or whatever, or, you know, there's a sale on at Aldi and you buy it because they're always desperate for tissues and detergent liquids, um, you, know, to, you know, cups and sauces, if you go into this, this you know, go next to the church there on, uh, in Newtown, and you just there's a table there, and you, you'll see the homeless coming out, yeah, looking for fresh bread versus the mouldy, stale ones that they that sometimes they're offered by. Yes, right. Yeah. Okay. So consequently, that's the end goal. The end goal is to be able to earn enough money to be able to donate it, to give it to people to run homeless shelters. And homelessness has, like I think I mentioned before, has skyrocketed the past year thanks to COVID. Yes. And well, donations. Have plummeted. Yeah. Yes. Less people are working. Yep. Yep. So if you had one piece of advice for people who say business owners and they're going, oh, maybe I should do something. Um, well, it's not asking a lot. And it's like I said, it's not I'm doing it every, it's one product. It's a $25 product. Let's be real. I don't have a whole range just yet. It's one. Yeah. Okay? I am working for the other two, but still, Every couple of months, donate a weekend's worth of online sales of profit, 100% profit to or sales. I don't. Yeah. I mean, again, again, it's not. I don't feel it's my duty to tell people what to do. I have to focus on me and being a better oh, yeah. version of me. But if we all did a little bit more, yeah, we would internally. Get a sense of joy. I mean, I know how I feel when I put my surf life-saving uniform on and I'm 55. I feel great to be there with a team of people who are from the age of 16 to 55. That feels, it's great that every second weekend we're down at Long Reef, giving back to the community, demonstrating, de de you know, like demonstrating our care. Yeah. I know how great I feel when I go, I've just donated to Lifeline and it's because you bought my $25 Chafing cream, <laughs> and I'm now going to give that profit back to Lifeline. I know how good that makes my customers feel. They absolutely love it. Yeah. I cannot begin to tell you how much joy they get going, oh, I didn't think about that, but yeah. you've now given me an avenue, right, so I can help. Do you see? Yes. yes. <laughs> so, so it's not just... You helping your customers feel customers they feel helping. good about buying a product they do. that gives back to somebody else. Yes, 
Yes, they do. And it's not every day. It doesn't have to be every week. It could be every couple of months. Yeah. Just, Just something. And especially for me now, that homelessness, mental health, living, black dog, beyond blue, all of that, they need help desperately. Yeah. And like I said, of course, I mean, I've seen severe poverty, poverty overseas, but I've seen poverty here too. Yeah. I've yeah. seen poverty here in Australia too. There's, there's people in, our own, in every community who, who are doing it hard. They're doing it really hard. And it's not a big deal for us to buy an extra milk or an extra, you know, loaf of bread or whatever. Okay. It really is not, I mean, when you think about it, okay, and that's what my customers say to me, I didn't think of it. That's okay. It's fine. We're a team. Yeah. Okay. You've bought the product. I'm going to give the profit to Red Cross, Mm. right? We've done this as a team. Then they feel part of a community. And people, the thing that, that affects our mental health the most is when you feel isolated. Okay. Very true. There's been a lot of that in the past. Okay. But we don't have to feel isolated mm-hmm. like when we know, especially, you know, we've got technology. It's not like we're sitting here in a community. We're like, as it, how can you feel isolated when you're on Zoom and you're talking to, to, to someone and communicating with someone authentically? You know, it, 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 it is fantastic to be able to, 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 to feel that you're part of the course. And you can see the team spirit. And when, you know, when we do, you know, like, like I think I mentioned before, you know, when I, like, you know, two years ago was the last time I performed for blood cancer research. We had 600 people there at La Montage. And, the, and these are people that I've danced with since I was a kid. You know, that feeling that you get when you're unified, when you, you know, when you come together and you work towards a common cause, it's just, and when you see the joy in their faces, like when I went to that homeless shelter last week and I went in there with 12 loaves of fresh bread, they were so euphoric. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They Fresh were... bread. Wow. Yeah, because they, they won't get it. They usually get the leftovers. But they do get the leftovers. But they, well, they do because the restaurants just run out of food. And okay, yeah. it's better than being than throwing it out. A lot of businesses throw, throw it out because they oh, can't yeah. be bothered, right? Okay. Um, it's but it was I happened to be in a position where there were 12 loaves of bread. Yeah. So in the end, um, the joy that I got to see their faces was worth the drive. Absolutely. So, yeah, so my piece of advice basically is it doesn't have to be every day. It could be once a month. I think once a month if you say I dedicate this weekend or this day or this hour on raising awareness, and, it, and like I said, it doesn't have to be something that's affected your family. Like for my family, it's been heart disease. No, no. And I think there's some of the strongest, some of the strongest, um, motivators are the things that aren't your your own story well yeah it's not you know like yeah yeah and and because i know that with you know there is a lot of marketing dollars going towards certain cancers not brain cancer brain cancer actually does need a lot of work and i've done some work with them too um and and like i said with heart disease there is more awareness but when it comes to homelessness and mental health yeah it's, and most it's, of it's just not a glamorous. Imagine. It's not a glamorous. It's not glamorous. Charity. People don't want to walk past. And you know, when I've taken my kids to the homeless shelters, I've said to them, "You don't have to go and feed. Uh, you don't have to serve. Even though you know the volunteers are really quite old and quite tired, have a conversation because they want to be heard. Yes, and, and then you'd be am- and you'd be amazed at what their backgrounds have come from and yes. how they've ended up homeless. It is these conversations story. are often more important than anything yes. else. Exactly. Yes. So I've really loved having you on, Daphne. You've given us lots of things to think about and we've had wonderful conversations. You're welcome. And just before we go, how can people get in touch with you and find your products? I'll have to give you a link. We um, will. We'll have a www. link. www.lajoie.skin, S-K-I-N, or even if you Google Kame, C-A-L-M-M-E. Um, even if you Google my name, Daphne Capetis, whichever way you go. And if you provide the link, um, you'll find me. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah, and I'll put a link on when the information for the... Absolutely. And if there's anything else that we can do to help make the world a better place, we are here. Wonderful. Always open for ideas and, and, and you know, and collaborations. 
always open. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to have a chat. Thank you, Daphne, so much for coming along. Thank you. Okay. Have a great week. You too. Okay. And that's all we have time for today in the Social Mission Revolution. We'll be back next time with another Social Mission Revolutionist. Thank you. This has been the Social Mission Revolution with Andrea Putting. Join me again next week when we'll speak to another social mission revolutionist who will inspire you on your journey to making your ultimate impact on the world.